Hi, this is Tracy with the Rhapsody Art Barn. Uh, my brick and mortar store is in Salem, Oregon, and I also have everything online at rhapsodyartbarn.com. So if you need any of the products I show you today, that is where you find them. And all my social media links, my Facebook Lives, everything you can find under Rhapsody Art Barn. So today I'm gonna to be talking about rice paper. So I use rice paper if I want a beautiful, bright, colored image in the center of something, or if I want to apply it to something that curves. Um, typically, you can get them large scale, um, but typically smaller pieces of rice paper, they come, you know, different sizes, European sizes, so they come like a1, A2, A3, A4, A4 being a standard kind of sheet of paper size. And then the larger the numbers, the smaller the paper. So in reverse, the smaller the numbers, A3 is gonna be bigger, A2 is yet bigger, and then A1 is, is quite large. So you can use them for furniture. And again, they're easy to work with because they're woven um, almost like a, a napkin versus tissue paper that is paper. So if you're doing projects where um, something curves a lot, uh, rice paper tends to be more flexible like a napkin, but durable, very durable. And because it's woven, uh, if you watch my Decoupage 101, I use paper. Um, for this, I use a different medium to apply it. So typically in my Decoupage 101, I like the DIY um, liquid patina, which is stickier. So the stickier, the easier to lift it up and put it back down. It's got more open time. Um, but for rice paper, I like it to be thinner and dry faster. And the reason for this, I find, is the weave in the rice paper makes it so that um, the liquid, when it's stickier and drippier and not as gooey, it uh, allows it to come through the weave and bend the, the paper more easily. You can still move it around a little bit, but it's, it's way more pliable than paper. And so I want it to stick down. And so I go over the top of the paper. I'm gonna just go ahead and start doing my project so that you can see what I'm talking about. But if you have questions about the difference, you can also look at the Decoupage 101 um, where I use standard tissue paper. So today I'm gonna to put you down here so you can see what I'm working on. Today I have a decoy duck that is it's just a actual antique decoy duck it's uh victor duck and plastic but it's been painted with a chalk style paint um any chalk style paint should adhere pretty well to this material um it was definitely already painted before so i was actually going over paint and i've left his little beak because I like that rusty, crusty look and I think it's kind of fun, but you can, you know, make them, make them your own. So this was something I picked up at a thrift store and I'm just gonna change the look of it with some rice paper. You can use any one of the rice papers. I'll put a link to my rice paper page on my website. They're all listed together, or you can look at them by brand, but I'll put it so you can look at all the rice papers because they all should act similarly. They're all gonna have a little bit of a different consistency depending on what manufacturer they use. Um, some of them will say they're from Italy, some of them are USA, and each paper might be a little bit different, but they all have that same fibrous material inside the paper. So this one is a Dixie Bell. It's actually got much more fibers than some of my other papers. It might be um, the most fibrous. So I'm gonna use this to show you guys. And then it, the, the fibers as they go down might be easier to rip apart, just so you know. And, and it's all a preference, you guys, right? Some people like those fibers and some people want it to be more like some of my other papers. And I'll show you one. 
that are a little less fibrous and a little more fine. This is one that's from the Decoupage Queen. You can see the fibers in there, but it's not quite as fibrous. And when you rip the edges, rice paper tends to fray and fuzz. That's kind of just the nature of a rice paper, but as you can see, it rips very easily. I'm applying water to mine to rip the edges on this one. I actually let it soak in a little bit too long there. So now I've got to keep my finger along that edge so I don't rip too far. And as you can see, the fibers See, it ripped in a little bit farther. The fibers um, puff up as you rip it. And that actually is a good thing when you're talking about blending rice paper into your project. I, I typically like that ripped torn edge um, for lots of reasons. So, one reason is when you're putting a piece of paper on a project and you have a straight edge, whatever that straight line may be, your eye will be drawn to that straight line versus something that's got a torn edge. It can meld in with the other piece of paper or with your project. Okay, so that's one reason. And another reason I like it is because when you're blending and you're adding paint colors or another design or another piece of paper, that torn edge makes it, again, so your eye doesn't see that line and it kind of melds in or the paint stretches out and you don't notice that cut line. So I always rip my pages. Now this one here has an outline on it. As you saw, this other one also had an outline around it and they typically do come with this edge. So I'm just gonna take the next few minutes ripping all the edges off of this. You can see how just adding some water makes the paper rip more easily and more evenly. Um, these are water pens. You can get them through my Amazon link on my website, or you can just go to Amazon and put in, I think it's just a water pen, but they're just a handy tool, or you can just use a paintbrush and dip it into some water, whatever's easy for you. So now that I have ripped it all up, I'm going to decide kind of how my pattern's going to go on my duck. I might need more than one paper, that's okay. And I also might need to piece some of this together, meaning piecemeal it. Um, and so ripping this and tearing it is okay. This paper is designed to wrinkle and tear and go around edges and that is perfectly fine. So. As you can see, I'm just kind of like trying to kind of go down the middle here with the duck and go around his neck. And I'm not doing a great job of keeping it even, but you know, I'm, I'm basically want this pattern on his back and then I'll go around the head somehow. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. But as you can see, it's kind of heading that direction to where this little top of the flower is gonna be on his neck and then maybe I'll put back a little bit and then his, his backside will have this design. So that is what I wanna start with because I like that. I think that's cute. And I don't care that I rip too far. I don't care that, you know, it doesn't line up around the edges. 
right now I'm just kind of laying the pattern down and getting it ready. The medium that I use is Big Top by DIY Paint. And this is the one that I like, I said, for rice paper. I have it in a squeeze bottle because it's easier for me. I use this all the time. And it's very liquidy. That's, that's the uh, nature of this stuff. Probably should have shaken it. Um, very liquidy. And I'm going to use just a soft, dry brush to apply it. You can see it's it's kind of a water consistency. The one that I was telling you I use for other paper, you can see the difference. This is called DIY Same Maker, but it's called Crystal Clear Chandelier Liquid Patina. You can see it's got a little more tooth to it. It's not as watery, okay? So you can use either. If you have this, use what you got, right? I always say that. But for the rice paper, I like a little more of the lay down water stuff. So I know I want this right at the base of his neck here. Turn it sideways so you can see. I know I want this flower to go right down the base of his neck. I don't wanna to do too much at one time. However, because I'm doing a pattern, I am gonna do the whole middle strip which means I have to have enough product to cover underneath what I'm putting down, okay? So if you do not have enough product, you end up with bubbles and wrinkles because you don't have enough product. Rice paper, however, is a little easier to use. I'm actually gonna cut around this, this guy so I know exactly where I'm gonna lay him. Um, rice paper is a little easier to use without bubbling because like tissue or like napkins, it does lay down and smooth out with the medium. It's almost like I'm wetting it with the medium and smoothing it out as I go. Okay, so I wanna keep my brush with some product on it and I don't do this with decoupage um, tissue paper like actual paper paper. Uh, I do it only with the rice paper where I smooth at the top and take out the wrinkles with the brush. And again, it's because the nature of this paper bends very freely and easily and allows me to wet the top. Um, I can still pick it up and move it at this point a little bit, but as I put the liquid on the top, the more I put on, the more saturated it gets or the more um, like stuck down it is underneath, the, ten the more tendency it will be to rip. So you do wanna, you know, you can still make minor adjustments, but you do want to make sure that once it's down, you're messing with it as little as possible. And if I notice that it's not laying down, then I just go underneath, lift it up, and put more product because that is key. You have to have enough of your top coat. This is a water-based top coat that I'm using. Um, you do not have to use this brand. I do love this brand for this, but you can use whatever water-based sealer, varnish, top coat you have available to you. This one is gonna be a little more glossy because it is a water-resistant top coat, but um, not as glossy as some. I have seen glossier. Okay, so I'm doing that. See how it's laying down and it's not picking up. See that? I don't want to mess with it too much and show you by lifting and dro dropping it down. I'm going to have corners that don't have anything. Don't worry about it right now, okay? Because this is a pattern, I have to kind of think ahead. You know, if this was just one solid mass of color or didn't have a whole lot of pattern that was definable like flowers are, um, then I could literally just mosaic rip pieces off and put them on. Um, I am gonna have to think a little bit about the pattern with this because it does have flowers that go together, you know? 
So I just rip around the edges and start manipulating my paper to go into those crevices without wrinkling my paper too much. I mean, there are going to be some wrinkles. We're going around corners, but I like it to lay down as flat as possible. But you can see it does a very nice job of laying down. And this duck has the definition underneath the outline of his feathers. So I'm also, you're, you're gonna be seeing those lines as well. It's not just the lines of the, um, the bird and the paper. You're gonna see the feather lines. So I'm ripping little pieces off so I can go around the corner and I'll show you how I do that. Same thing, we're gonna get plenty of product around the edge. We're not gonna worry about his head right now. We might do something fun on his head. And we're gonna make sure that our paper lines up with the other piece. And then we're gonna start applying under and over the top coat so that the paper lays down on the edges. Which means we kind of have to do it like a strip at a time. Right? Because we got to start at the top and push our paper down to avoid the wrinkles. But we also have to have it not bubble and be straight smooth. If it comes to the point where we can't do that any longer because the paper just doesn't, um, it won't lay around a corner <laughs> without wrinkling up, we either live with some of the wrinkles like I'm kind of doing now, like I can live with some of these wrinkles, I'm not gonna worry about it too much, right? These are not gonna make or break me because they're actually still showing the pattern. Or we can rip the paper up and start over with a different pattern. And I'll get to that point down here where his little tail narrows and it gets real wrinkly right here, see? And then I'm going to have to figure out now how far this is gonna go down without becoming a, a wrinkled mess, right? So it looks like I can go to about, about here before it starts. And I don't want to tear into a flower, but I kind of have to go where the wrinkles are. And then you just go up until where it stops wrinkling. Get enough of your product underneath. There's no rule about this. It's really what it looks like to you too. And I'm going to kind of tear a little bit and then make sure there's plenty under, plenty under, and then I'm going to overlap where it's wrinkling and create a new line so it doesn't wrinkle there anymore. See how that, and then it just smooths out under and over, under and over. And then it smooths it out. It like takes away some of the excess paper because you're overlapping it. And yes, it does break up the design. That's okay, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Nobody's gonna be looking at the design that closely. And if it really bothers you, you can come in with a whole nother piece and put something over that that's different. But in this case, I'm not gonna worry too much about the side of this duck. I'm gonna just make sure that his little paper is not bubbling up and wrinkling, and I'm just gonna lay down a new pattern for these, these flowers. And I'm just gonna try to get my paper as straight as possible, and hopefully eliminate some of those wrinkles, okay? So see, it's still a pattern. It's not the same pattern. It's broken up now, but it eliminated that crunchly, um, bubbly look that you get from going around the corner. 
and then just make sure that you're smoothing your lines and you just keep going about the same thing it's going to do the same thing it's going to bubble up down on the next edge so i gotta make sure i have plenty of stuff under it because it's pulling up i don't it's pulling up i think i need something to hold my duck <laughs> my duck is swimming away okay this paper I am trying to lay back down and I pulled it off by spinning my duck around so give me two seconds to get it all laid back down again and clearly the more you mess with that the more it messes up so you just want to Fix it and forget it. Let it dry. If it starts going rogue on you, let it dry and come back. You do not have to work with wet rice paper. But I am doing it on probably one of the hardest things to do it on, which is a curved surface that goes around corners and I've got a pattern. So, you know, I'm trying to give you all the, all the help doing the hardest thing. but it may be that you have a much easier project than this <laughs> and that's good you'll get to the point where you'll get a feel for it and be able to go around the corners just like that okay let's see if we can't leave i keep messing with that one piece leave this guy alone for a second on this side stop messing up my one piece and then we're going to start on this side same thing we're going to lift apply the medium all the way down the strip and start smoothing it out on the top taking it into account that it's going around a corner up here we may have to tear this off and move it down a little to make it smooth. Let me show you. So I tore this so that this part would lay smooth. Okay, can you see? Do the same thing under here. Make sure there's enough of the product all the way down. At this point, I just want it to lay as smooth as I can get it around those corners. Same thing, it's gonna get more wrinkly because I'm changing shape down here. So without messing this side up too much, you can always do this in stages if you're not doing a video. I'm gonna pull it back a little bit and make sure there's plenty underneath. do the same thing and try to pull it as taut as we can as even as we can and if we can't if it gets to the point where it doesn't lay down back here oh, oh, stay down stay down then we're gonna have to tear it up like I did on the other side So I have completely messed this side up again. I'm gonna have to just leave it like this and I'm sorry if you can't see as well. I just don't want it to ruin that side as I go. Okay, so I see it's starting to buckle really bad right in here. 
do the same thing just to rip it up to where it starts to wrinkle and lay down the bottom piece first make sure you have enough stuff on your duck down and smooth them out so you can see I've gone over this tail several times trying to smooth it out and my paper is not ripped at all now that I say that <laughs> don't rip the whole paper so it is still pliable it's wet but it's still pliable and I may have to do the undercarriage after this dries I just don't want it to to pop up and rip while I'm messing around so much with the top okay so again i make sure there's enough underneath and start laying down where you rip it until you can lay it smooth on the one until you can lay it smooth and then overlap overlap the cut part and see how those fuzzy edges they just blend right in and mask what you've done your pattern is not going to be masked so you have to be mindful of your pattern still and put your biggest best pattern where you don't have the wrinkles where you don't have to cut it but again the eye is not going to be drawn to it because even though the pattern has changed a little bit, you're not gonna see any wrinkling, you're not gonna see anything that will take your eye away from the beauty of the flowers on top. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry and we'll come back and do a little bit more of our duck. Okay, so I'm slowly working my duck around the edges and I'm just gonna put you down so you can see what I'm doing and we'll just continue on. Um, I did meld around the edge and then tore it off a little bit and I am not gonna probably go much further than that around the edges at the bottom because it's gonna be sitting at the bottom. So all I've been doing is maneuvering this around again, it's ripped right there where it overlapped, where it was becoming a problem. And I'll have to do it again down here. So I'm going to rip it probably, let's see, around the edge of this back feather. Up to where his tail is wrinkling, okay? And then I just smooth down the underside of him. And again, this is the bottom. I'm not as concerned with the bottom looking perfect or making a pattern. So I'm going to make sure that he's laying down, but I'm not going to worry too much about the placement of the flowers underneath. And then again, where he has to end, I'll just rip it off. Make sure I have enough to go around the edge. Okay, so at the end here, got a lot of puffy stuff. Going to tear some of that puffy stuff off in a neat line. <laughs> it's not very neat. <laughs> and then, same thing, I'm going to go in with product, get it nice and mushy wet, blend down the outside, blend down the other side like folding a burrito, and you can go paper on top of paper here. Don't worry about that. Just make sure you have enough medium and you're gonna fold it down to make a nice little backside. Okay, it's getting sticky. 
as it starts to dry. So my hands are sticky and this is getting sticky. If you keep messing with it while it's sticky, you're gonna get those little fuzzies off the paper and you can rip the paper up. So just beware of that. So this is one piece of paper so far and I've gotten all the way around my duck, except for, looks like just his little backside right there. Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's remedy that little backside right there. like this paper will easily go over that not that one but definitely that one so again we're just paper over paper is fine just make sure you have enough of your product down get it nice and wet and then start just melding it into the other piece you're gonna see that other stuff through the bottom that's okay it actually is kind of fun sometimes when you do the mosaic on top of the paper, on top of the paper, see how that overlays. I actually kind of like that look. So we're not gonna do that on his back. We want his back nice and smooth, but on his underside, I think it's kind of cute. Okay, not gonna worry about that a bit. So now we gotta do the same thing on his breast. Gotta make sure that we have something that maybe goes down like this. This flower goes down, make, give him a little collar. And we're gonna just start kind of piecemealing this one together. They're both cute. And see, I have places I'm missing. This is, we're gonna try to mosaic it all together. And places where it's a little bit going around the edges. We're trying to smooth it as smooth as we can get, but don't worry about it. See, gave him a little necklace. His head is turned, his head turns. And we wanna make sure his head keeps turning. Oh, there we go. So we may have to go around the edge with a razor blade when we're done. Make sure it keeps turning, our head keeps turning. Okay, if we have a spot where we're missing a piece of something and we need to fill it in. Just grab a little edge. Try to make it so that that paper doesn't um, ruin your picture, but don't worry too much about if it's overlapping another piece and you just fill it right in. I don't even know if you can tell. Just fill in your little pieces. Don't worry about it. Happy little accidents, right? There's a couple of them. I'm just taking these little blue flowers. My hands are getting sticky. A couple of these little blue flowers because they, they make good little um, fill-in edges. And we're just gonna fill in some of those little pieces that are missing. And this one that was giving me so many problems, it's still a pretty flower. I'm just gonna tear that edge off that was giving me a problem. We don't need them. This is why my hands are getting sticky. And we're gonna put them somewhere else, like maybe right there. Maybe upside down because it's going the other way. Maybe right here. There, that's pretty, right there. Now he's got a bigger necklace. And we didn't even need to mess with that part that was bothering us. See how cute that is? Just add it, add it until you got enough to where there's none of the uh, spaces showing. Overlap it, add it, mosaic. Doesn't matter if it's overcrowded, just play with it. This is where your artistic sense goes, you know, kind of follow the pattern as far as like which direction the flowers are going, but don't worry too much more about how they're going to lay down aesthetically. This paper's forgiving. It's pretty, it's whimsical. It isn't a perfect application. It's okay. It goes right around that edge. See how cute is that? See, now we're just missing a little bit right here. 
Let's do the same thing. We got some really fun flourish right here. We got a fun little flower over here we can use. A flourish down here. This has got a flower. Kind of continues on that little flourish pattern right there. And just go all the way down the edges. The biggest thing is to make sure you have enough product. Let's see, how's that gonna go? I think actually, actually, let me look at it for a second. I need to start it up higher. There we go. Try to take away something that takes away from my my medallion. That might be too busy. I might want to go a little less busy over there. Maybe a little something. More like those little blue flowers. Continues it on, but without it being taken it away from I because that that one medallion I want to be in the center. I like that. Let's see, I need a little bit of I'm doing it so you guys can see it, so I'm a little off. And then we don't need that much. We just don't need that much. We don't need all these right here. Let's, see, let's take those off. I like those little flowers for other things. Oh my goodness. Sticky, sticky stuff. Sticky, sticky stuff. There we go. Let's just piece this in. I'm taking my time and doing a little bit more design work here, matching them up. But that's the fun part for me. We want to make it look unique. Unique to what you like. Okay, I'm tearing off another piece and adding another piece. And I'm just going to continue to do this until it looks how I like it. However that is. And then there you go. How cute is that? Got one more little piece down at the bottom. And I want to continue that little fun floral look. So I'm going to use that one flower I found. And I'm just going to overlap. Try to do it so you can see and I can see. Put a little flower down here. Maybe those little teeny tiny cute little flowers right here. Let's see, way too big a piece. I'm just gonna stick them on here. There we go, finish off the bottom. There's the whole front. Okay, see how we did that? Still have a few more pieces left, but I don't know that we have enough to go around the entire head. So what I'll probably end up doing is I have a couple choices. I can leave it with a colored head, maybe a blue, a royal uh, a cobalt blue. Um, or red or green, you know, make a, a, the head a different color, which actually would be okay for a duck. And that would actually blend that rusty crusty into, or I could open another, the paper comes with three sheets um, of this and do its whole head. But I'm kind of liking the, the no head. Um, I'm thinking maybe I'll, uh, I'll pick one of these colors out of here and paint the head one of those colors. Probably that rusty red would be really cute. 
um, and blend, blend it all together. And then I can use that beak, leave that beak the same. Okay, I'll show you that. I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and you have to do this once it's dry and go around all the edges so that the duck head starts to swivel and cut away any paper that goes above the neck. So here we go. Here's our little duck. I painted the top with some chalk paint burgundy. You can find them on my website. Not cute. And he's dry. I've gone around the edge with the uh, razor blade all the way around and I'm still kind of digging the, the beak, but it could go either way. You could make it a different color as well and, and have it be smooth and pretty. I just like the rusty crusty look. So here is my finished rice paper duck. Um, I hope you like this tutorial. If you like it, hit like and subscribe and you can see more product demos uh, from things I carry at the Rhapsody Art Barn. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time.